to our Wednesday evening live streams, live stream service. And uh, thank you for joining us on Facebook and then on our website, vbcrr.org. Also on the radio, WVFV 95.9 FM. And we're going to begin our service today with Living by Faith. And let's sing it out together. I care not today what the morrow may bring. If shadow or sunshine or rain, sing it out. I care not today what the morrow may bring. If It's 373 in the gold. The sun's coming up in the morning. Let's sing that one out together. Once again, I face Satan this morning. Sing it out loud. Here we go. Once again, I face Satan. I'll 
take to the sky. Amen. Great singing. It's good to see everybody in our online service. And thanks so much for tuning in. And please uh, leave us a comment. Let us know where you're uh, watching from and that you're watching. And I encourage you to do that. And uh, just as the sun is coming up in the morning, we know that God is faithful to us. And uh, even during testing and trying times, God is still faithful. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to bless the service tonight. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to proclaim your word, to sing your uh, praises to you. And Father, I pray that you would have your hand upon our country during this time. Pray that you'd have your hand upon our leaders that are uh, in the decision-making process. God, that you'd give them wisdom, that you'd give them grace. I pray that they would seek your face and desire you, Lord. And uh, I would just uh, pray, Lord, for our county, Lord, for our city, that you'd have your hand upon our leaders as well. Pray for those doctors and nurses and first responders that you'd give them health and strength, give them wisdom as they deal with each and every situation. And God, I would just pray that you would heal our land. But uh, Lord, for that, I pray that we would come to you and confess our sins. And Lord, I pray that we would just seek your face and uh, seek your power once again. For we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. 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 We're going to sing again. It's 356 in the gold hymnal. Because he lives. And sing it out there from home. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. Sing it out there on the first. God sent his son. today so thankful for that let's sing one more you got one more in you here it is i rest my case at the cross 337 in the gold hymnal sing it out there on the first there's a covenant sweet it was written for me it's a promise
singing. I love to hear uh, the piano playing and the organ playing and Brother Nathan leading the singing. And I'm sitting down here on the front row. I'm having myself a time just singing and thinking about the words. And aren't you glad that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And because he lives, all fear is gone. Hallelujah for that. And I'm so, so thankful that you are tuning in tonight. I got to watch. I was in my office. I was going to try to slip in here for the teen service, and I got uh, tied up. So I just watched the whole teen service uh, from my office, and it was powerful. If you uh, teens, if you missed it, you need to go back and you need to tune in and hear Brother Nathan preach. And uh, he gave a little program and uh, devotional and uh, um, uh, quiz questions and jokes. I mean, it was great. And uh, I appreciate so much Brother Nathan doing that. And I appreciate our sound men tonight. Brother uh, Russell's here. Thank you for doing the sound. And uh, Caleb and uh, Jared running the video and the radio. And I appreciate them so much and all their work. And thank you uh, for uh, your help and thank you for your labor tonight. Thank you, Miss Lydia and Miss Odell for playing the instruments. And uh, we'll get to hear from Landon Morris. He'll be singing in a few minutes. And uh, Miss Francis will be playing, and that'll be great. Happy birthday this week. And we're going to get a banner made for Sunday so you can see these on the screen. But birthdays this week, Teresa Long and Ray Salazar. And Linda Smith, of course, she's moved away, but we still uh, appreciate her so much. And uh, Chelsea Dixon and Tim Phelps and Phyllis Pear and Joni Butts and Miles Upton and Sailor Clements and Frank Griffin and Bryson Pear. Happy birthday. And then anniversaries, Calvin and Hilda Bishop and Mike and Loretta Clark and Brian and Sharon Howerton. Tony and Nancy Jones and Brian and Jessica Dixon. Happy anniversary to you folks there. I sent out today, I hope you got it, I sent out an email, and if you did not get it, that means we don't have your email address, so if you'll let us know that. I also put it on our Facebook page for our church with a video, but I just wanted to just kind of put everything together, uh, at least an overview for you to know what's going on uh, during these days, and we've kind of been giving you bits and pieces, but number one, I want to remind you about the live streaming, and of course, if you're watching, you know about that, but I hope you'll share it, and I hope you'll comment, I hope you'll like it, and let other people know about it so others can tune in also. Um, of course, uh, the next service will be Sunday morning at 11, and then this Sunday night, we'll get to hear from Brother Dan. He'll be preaching, and you won't want to miss that. Secondly, it's the radio, and I hope you'll tune into the radio for our services. They're live at all of those times. And then also, uh, all day, every day, you can tune into our radio, 95.9 FM and voiceforvictory.org. This Sunday morning uh, is our first official 
drive-in church. And I encourage you to come and be here in the front parking lot and come a little early. It'll start at 11, but come a little early. We'll have parking attendants, and you're going to have to stay in your car. We can't get out and, um, you know, come in the buildings and all that. But we're planning to do that Sunday morning. If something changes with the restrictions and all that, we'll keep you posted. But as of Wednesday night, we're now looking forward to this Sunday morning for drive-in church. And we'll still be live streaming. So if you say, well, I can't come to the drive-in, well, you can still watch it by way of live stream. And you can also listen by way of radio at your home, uh, but whatever works better for you. Next, I want to remind you, uh, especially in these days, we're not having our Wednesday night prayer meetings, but we have a couple different ways that you can be updated for prayer requests. One is we have a, a closed group for our church family, but it's a Facebook prayer group. And if you will search for that, it's Victory Baptist Roanoke Rapids Prayer Group. And if you'll uh, click to join that, uh, we'll let you get in that and you can see all the updates. We update it three times a week. And also we have our prayer line that you can call in. You can call it any time, but it's updated Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, and it's area code 252-242-0100. And I hope you'll continue to pray for one another. Our buses are, are not running, but our bus workers are going out on Saturdays. They're not going in the houses. They're not, you know, huddling around with the kids, but they're just dropping off a goodie bag every Saturday. And I thank our bus workers for that and uh, Brother Caleb for heading that up. Our ladies' ministries, I told you Sunday night, and it is now, it is in motion. Uh, one of our assistant pastor's wives uh, recorded today. We'll have another one or two tomorrow, and so we'll let you know about that. And I promise you, ladies, you will be blessed. I was, I was trying not to shout amen in the radio room today because it was so good, and I know you'll be blessed by uh, getting to hear from our ladies. Uh, giving, we've told you about that, but during this time, you can give online. You can mail it in. You can drop it off. And thank you to uh, so many who have already done so. And uh, that encourages me so much. And then uh, if there's anything that you need at this time, a lot of you, you know, you know what you do. You wait till church and you'll let me know or one of our assistant pastors or you'll jot down the prayer card. But since we cannot do that, I hope you'll call me uh, anytime. I hope you'll call me. I hope you email me. I hope you call the church office and let us know what we can do to help. Um, we have uh, such a wonderful church family, and you folks are the best. And I thank you so much for your encouragement and your faithfulness during this time. I want to remind you of just a couple prayer requests. Uh, most of them will have updated um, on the uh, prayer page uh, on Facebook. But uh, good news, Brother Edmund Dixon uh, went home yesterday after bypass surgery. Praise God for that. Ms. Dorella Justice I was able to go home yesterday, and uh, that's an answer to prayer. Um, continue to pray for uh, Mrs. Fields. She has been hospitalized. She's been at Liberty Commons, but now in the hospital. And then also, if you remember Joan Todd, and she's, of course, been struggling with her health, but she is in a very uh, serious kidney failure. And I hope you remember her, and I hope you pray for one another. At this time, we're going to have the offering time, and if you've already given online or you've sent your stuff in, then I hope you'll take this time uh, to pray. Uh, pray for these folks, pray for the service, pray for our members, pray for our country. And uh, at this time, we'll ask Miss Lydia to play a song for us. And then after the offertory, uh, we'll get to hear from Landon uh, Morris. He'll be singing, and I know it'll be a blessing to you.
you for that good song. Take your Bibles, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 13, and we'll get Landon up here to sing, and I know it'll be a blessing to you. And then right after he sings, we'll get into our Bible study for this Wednesday evening. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day when God's people humble themselves to call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. I have learned in all that happens just to praise Him. For I know He's working all things for my good. Every tear I shed is worth all the investment. For I know He'll see me through, He said He would. He has promised I nor ear can hardly fathom all the things He has in store for those who pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. Yes, I've noticed all the bad news on the TV. And it seems like things are bleaker every day. But for this child of God, it makes no difference. Cause it's bound to get better either way. Yes, I've never been more thrilled about tomorrow. Sunshine's always bursting through those skies of gray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that happy day. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Landon and Miss Francis. That's a wonderful song, and I'm so glad that uh, for the child of God, no matter what happens down here, uh, things are going to get better. Hallelujah for that. Jeremiah 13 in your Bibles, and I've really uh, prayed about and battled with whether or not to continue our series from Jeremiah or to go a different direction in these days, but I just feel like that God has something for us from this book, and I'm just going to stay in it for a little while, and uh, I hope we'll get back soon to church. I don't know how soon it'll be, uh, but I know this. I'm praying uh, that we'll be able to be back together in God's house very soon. And I hope you will pray. Um, you know, I know what, uh, what, what the government says, and I know what the uh, medical experts say, and I don't discount that one bit, but I also know that God is able. And I hope you'll pray for that and pray for our country. Jeremiah 13 is a very... Uh, unique chapter. It's a very uh, unique um, um, object lesson that God uses because it says in Jeremiah 13, verse number 1, Thus saith the Lord unto me. Here is a, a, a new message that Jeremiah is preaching, and he relays it to God's people as God gave it to him. Thus saith the Lord unto me, Go and get, it has the idea to purchase, uh, a linen girdle. And put it upon thy loins, and put it not in water. So I got a girdle, according to the word of the Lord, and I put it on my loins. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, Take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins, and arise, and go to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. So I went and hid it by Euphrates, as the Lord commanded me came to pass after many days that the Lord said unto me, Arise, go to Euphrates, and take the girdle from thence, which I commanded thee to hide there. Then I went to Euphrates, Jeremiah said, and I digged. And I took the girdle from the place where I had hid it, 
literally buried in the ground near the river. It was in a, a hole uh, in the rocks. And, and it says, uh, behold, this should not be a, a shock. This should not be a surprise. But it says the girdle, that, that garment was marred. It was damaged. It was destroyed. Uh, it was not what it once was. It had, uh, it had been uh, harmed. It had been hurt. The material, that, uh, that l fine linen was no longer fine linen. It had been left out in the elements. And the Bible says it was profitable for nothing. You say, well, that's kind of a strange illustration. And that's a strange sequence of events. And I agree with you. But as we read on in the chapter, we see that that garment represented the nation of Israel. And God was using this object lesson to teach his people some very valuable lessons. I'd like to share some of those lessons with you tonight. And uh, as I pray, I would ask you one more time, I'd ask you to pray and ask God to show you, as I've asked God to show me, what in my life needs to be changed. Uh, what are some things in my life that I can learn from? What are some, some things that I can glean from the scriptures that would help me to be what God wants me to be? And let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. We know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And we know that this chapter is no accident. This chapter was given on purpose. It was given for a reason. It was given for a lesson for your people. And I believe the lesson is 100% applicable today. And I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. Help us not to miss these truths, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, I see in this passage, the garment. The garment was a girdle, and in Bible times, it was a, a garment that was worn around the waist. It was used by the priests. Uh, it was used by soldiers in the military. Of course, in Ephesians 6, we are admonished to put on the whole armor of God. And the Bible says, and your loins gird about with truth. It was a part of the armor. It was a part of the wardrobe that a soldier would put on in order to uh, be complete and to be prepared for the battle. This garment was an important piece of clothing. It was uh, something that was especially uh, noted for the priest that they were supposed to wear. This garment represented the nation of Israel. If you'll no doubt, notice down with me in verse number 11, it says, For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me a, a, for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory, but they would not hear. God intended for this garment to represent Israel, and this garment was supposed to be a garment then that would be close to God, a garment that would be wrapped around God himself and attached to God himself. And just like this garment would have been wrapped around a person, God wanted his people to be close to him, and God wanted his people to be attached to him, and God still today wants his people to be close to him. You say, well, pastor, that's hard to do because we can't come to church. It's not what I'm talking about. Uh, if you wait until you come to church to be close to God, you're not going to be very close to God. You and I ought to walk with God every single day. Every day we've got to get in the Bible. Every day we've got to get in prayer. And I'm not just talking about listening to somebody share a thought, although I think that's good. I think we need it. Uh, we have it on our uh, uh, Facebook. We have it on our radio. But you have to get alone with God every single day. I think about the a relationship, uh, my relationship with my wife. When we were dating and we did not live uh, in the same town, we uh, dated uh, long distance, about two hours away. Can I tell you, yes, we wrote letters and yes, we called and uh, that was before uh, text messaging, so I guess that tells you how long ago that was. But yes, but can I tell you, we wanted to be together. We wanted to see one another. We wanted to talk face to face. And can I tell you, it's no substitute for you to say, well, I'll let somebody else walk with God and I'll just kind of get close to them. That's not enough. You have to walk with God and I have to walk with God. And God wants us and desires us to be close to him and attached to him. And this garment represented God's people. They were supposed to be close to him. 
Secondly, I see that this garment, the material was a valuable material. If you look through the Old Testament, there were many garments that were made out of wool. That was more common. Like in today's culture, a lot of our garments would be made out of cotton. That's just more common. But linen represents a fine material. Not commonplace, not ordinary, not average. And can I tell you, God's people, we are not to be ordinary. We're not to be average. We're not to be commonplace. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9 that we are a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. We're a peculiar people. We're supposed to stand out from this world, not because we're better than this world, but because we belong to Jesus Christ. And God's people ought to be set apart. God's people ought to be sanctified for God's use, just as a linen garment was used for a special occasion. The linen was worn by the priests. Can I tell you, you and I, we have been chosen by God to carry out His work and to perform uh, His will. And you and I have a very specific task at hand. God saved you, but He didn't just save you to take you to heaven. He saved you and He saved me so that we could let our light shine, so that we could be a testimony, so that we could uh, be a witness, so that we could be a light for a world that is dark and a world that is lost and a world that has no hope. This was a holy garment that Jeremiah would be wearing as a man of God, as a prophet, uh, as a priest, as someone who would proclaim the word of God. Jeremiah was commanded to be holy. As a matter of fact, we saw it in Jeremiah chapter 1, but God ordained Jeremiah. God sanctified Jeremiah to be a prophet unto the nations, and Jeremiah was, uh, was fulfilling a holy calling. And friend, I want to remind you, it's not just the pastor that's supposed to be holy. It's not just the youth pastor that's supposed to be holy. It's not just the deacon that's supposed to be holy or the Sunday school teacher or the choir member. It is every born again child of God. We are called to be holy. First Peter 1, be ye holy, saith the Lord, as I am holy. This garment was holy. This garment was to be set apart and different. And God's people should be set apart and we should be different from the world. But not only that, this garment was most likely purchased by Jeremiah. It appears the way that God commanded Jeremiah, he said, go and get a linen girdle. It appears like it wasn't something that he already owned or something he already had, or maybe he did have one, but this was new and this was special. But can I tell you, God's people you and I, we have been purchased. We've been purchased by God. We've been purchased, the Bible says in 1 Peter, not with corruptible things like silver and gold. You say, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Silver is valuable and gold's valuable, but we've not been purchased or redeemed with corruptible things, but we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was shed and that was spilt and that was given so that you and I could have eternal life. All oh, this garment represents God's people. And I tell you, this garment is a lesson for all of us to learn from. God wants us to be close to Him. God wants us to be set apart and sanctified. And God wants us to be holy. And God wants to remind us that we have been purchased. You don't belong to yourself. I don't belong to myself. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Jeremiah, he gets this girdle as God commands him to do. But then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time. And we see that God commanded Jeremiah to take this garment and do something very peculiar with it. He was commanded to take the garment and to take it to the Euphrates River, which was a good distance away. And he was supposed to take it and bury it in the ground, to put it in a hole in the ground. 
and then he was supposed to leave it there now friend I've got news for you I've got clothes in my closet and I've got clothes in my dresser and I don't keep any of them out in the backyard buried in a hole and neither do you if you've got any sense because clothing is not made to be outside it's not made to be outside in the dirt it's not made to be outside in the weather it's made to be taken care of and it is made to be worn and it is made to be used now when I was a boy my brother Joel and I were four years apart but we were I think it was probably because we I did and I think he did too but we loved G.I. Joe you know the old G.I. Joe uh, cartoon used to come on I could still sing you this song I might do it at the end of the service I won't do it now but uh, G.I. Joe we'd watch that and of course that's what we wanted to be we wanted to be soldiers and so I don't know where mom got it from or dad got it from but they got us some camo and we had camo from head to toe we had the camo pants and we had the the camo shirt and the the camo jacket and the camo uh, ball cap and we were decked out and we'd go out into the backyard and in the side yard and we didn't live in the country we lived in the city and I can't imagine what our neighbors thought but we would do the army crawl I mean we were we were soldiers I mean we were serious about being soldiers and we'd be playing in the backyard and the neighbors probably thought we were crazy and they were probably right but hey we were having the time of our lives we made in our backyard we made some forts back in some bushes and some trees and uh, I remember at one time this was awesome uh, my dad had some big trees in the backyard cut down and uh, my dad had a chainsaw and so he just said just leave them there he said we'll cut them up a little bit at a time we loved it our backyard was for a while it was huge branches everywhere and boy we made forts back in those things we had the time of our lives but in Illinois something happened around October November especially by December uh, the snow started to come and the weather started to get cold and uh, our our forts were not army forts anymore then we had to build snow forts if you know what I mean and then we'd have snowball fights but the ground was covered with snow and in Illinois many times the ground would be covered with snow and it would stay that way for months I remember a couple times in the spring I remember coming out and we'd be going back in our forts and we'd find some things that we had left out maybe it was a little cap gun or maybe it was a, 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 an army jacket or maybe it was a, an army cap and can i tell you it was ruined i mean uh, the, the 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 plastic would be all dirty or if it was metal it'd be rusted uh the clothes were were, were, were just nasty and they had had the dirt and the rain and all the elements and it we, we'd have something that was good at one time but because it was left out and it was in the elements it was damaged it was no longer something we wanted to put on it was no longer something that we would wear around with pride uh, it was damaged and that's exactly what God said happened to this garment it says in verse number seven that the girdle was marred it was destroyed and it was profitable for nothing can I tell you that's sad that is very very tragic to think that this garment represented God's people and God's people were created for a purpose they were created to bring glory to God and praise to God and they were created to worship God but now they have been marred now their testimony has been damaged and now their influence is gone and now they are good for nothing that sounds familiar to you it's probably because you're thinking of Matthew chapter 5 in Matthew chapter 5 the Bible tells us that as Christians we are the salt of the earth and the Bible says if the salt has lost its savor wherewith shall it be salted or or how can it be seasoned again it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men can I tell you you are valuable to God no matter what you do God loves you and God cares about you and I'm not trying to say that you'll ever lose God's love because you won't but how sad it is for God's people when we lose our testimony 
how sad it is for God's people when we lose our influence and when we cease to be a witness and we cease to be holy and we become like the world and we no longer have the impact that God wants us to have. How sad it is that this garment could no longer be worn and it could no longer be used. And how sad it is when God's people, they get away from God. And how sad it is when God's people stop fulfilling their purpose and God says, I love you and you are my child, but you're no longer accomplishing the purpose that I created you for. What a tragedy. How sad because God's people removed themselves from the protection and the blessing of God. This is a picture of the children of Israel going into captivity. Notice in Jeremiah 13 and verse number 19, the Bible says, the cities of the south shall be shut up and none shall open them. Judah shall be carried away captive, all of it, and it shall be wholly carried away captive. God's people did not have to go into captivity. That was not God's plan. That was not God's purpose. God wanted them to worship him. Notice with me what they should have been doing. Verse number 10, this evil people which refused to hear my words, they should have been listening, which refused to walk in the, which walk in the imagination of their heart. They should have been walking in God's way. They walk after other gods. They should have been serving the true God. They served false gods. They worshiped false gods. They should have been worshiping God. But because they got away from God, they experienced the judgment of God because they removed themselves from God's blessing. Notice verse number 11. For as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people. God says, I chose them, I selected them, I loved them, and I wanted them to be my people and for a name. God said, I wanted them to represent my name and for a praise. God said, I wanted my people to praise me and I wanted them to glorify me, but they would not hear. How sad. This garment lost its purpose. This garment, because of that, was destroyed. It was marred. It was profitable for nothing. But secondly, I see in this passage not only the garment, but I see the glory. Would you notice with me in verse number 16? The Bible says, Give glory to the Lord your God. We've already talked about it, but that's why we're here. Can I tell you, if in this situation in our country, if, if, if we as God's people would just realize we are created and we are on planet Earth for one purpose, and that is to bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. So you say, but things aren't going good for me. Maybe not, but maybe we can glorify God in it. Maybe we can still praise him. Maybe we can still sing and rejoice and people will see us and they won't glorify us, but they'll glorify our Father which is in heaven. You know why many people do not give glory to God? It's found in verse number 15. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. You know why God oftentimes does not get the glory in our lives that he deserves? Because we're too proud. You say, oh, no, not me, Pastor. You're talking to some. Oh, no, I'm talking to you. And I'm also talking to me. Our, our hearts are so filled with pride so many times. God hates pride. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination. First one on the list, a proud look. God hates pride. God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. God puts down the proud and God brings to nothing the proud, but God exalts those who will walk in humility with him. Verse nine, God said he would mar, he would destroy the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that Herod was giving a speech. And when he got done giving that speech, it was such a wonderful speech that the people there began to praise and they began to worship Herod for that speech. And the Bible says that Herod was eaten up of worms for one reason, because he gave not God the glory. 
I want to remind us tonight that anything good in our lives is all because of God. Anything good in your life, anything that we can look at and say, wow, that is good, or that's a blessing, or that's wonderful, anything good in our lives is all because of God. And may He be honored, and he, may He be glorified. No matter what happens in our lives, may God get all the glory because all the glory belongs to Him. Number one, I see the garment. Number two, I see the glory. The glory goes to God, verse number 16, but then I see, thirdly, the grief. The grief, the sorrow, the sadness is that God's people had turned from Him. It says in verse 25, this is thy lot. God says, this is what you deserve. This is what you have coming. This is thy lot. It's the portion of thy measures from me, the judgment that was measured out, saith the Lord. Here's why. Because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. What a grief. God's people, they were like that garment. They were created for a purpose. They were created to be close to God, but they did not give God the glory. And because of that, God said, you have become a grief to me and you have brought grief and sorrow upon yourselves. Verse number 26. Therefore will I discover thy skirts upon thy face that thy shame may appear. Verse 27, I have seen thine adulteries and thy neighings and the lewdness of thy whoredom and thine abominations on the hills and the fields. They had committed spiritual adultery. They had committed spiritual whoredoms. They had committed an abomination by worshiping false gods. And God says to his people, Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem. He says, Judgment is coming on you. You have brought this grief upon yourselves you say wow is that where the chapter ends is is that is that all we get from this message is that God's people were created to glorify him and praise him and they didn't and God judged them and that's the end of the story almost but not quite would you notice the last few words of verse 27 this is number four this is the good news this is the remedy. This is the hope. And I'm glad that with God there is always hope. I'm glad that with God there is always good news. You say, well, what's the good news for today? The good news is the gospel. The good news is that Jesus died on a cross and he was buried and he rose again. And because he lives, we can live. And because he lives, we can have salvation and we can have a home in heaven. And as Landon sang for the child of God, either way, it's going to be okay for God's people because there is good news. Verse 27, wilt thou not be made clean? That's the question. God says, won't you get right? Won't you get clean? Won't you get your sins cleansed? Oh, I'm so glad to tell you that we can be clean. We can have forgiveness. We can have cleansing. We can be restored. The Bible says that God's people had been marred. They had been damaged. Oh, we'll get there in a couple weeks, but chapter 18 is so powerful. It's the message at the potter's house. And the Bible tells us that that potter, he was preparing a vessel made of clay. And it says in verse number four, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. There was a vessel that was damaged, a vessel that was destroyed. But the Bible says, but the potter, he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make. Now, I can't do that, and you can't do that, but God can take the broken pieces, and God can put them together. God can take the damaged garment, the garment that had become ruined, and the garment that had become damaged, and God can take the damaged, and God can make it new. God can take the vilest sinner and make him clean. God can take your sin if you'll confess it. He'll forgive it. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. He can make you justified. 
He can make you whole. He can make you clean. I'm glad that God is still in the cleansing business. God is in the forgiving business. God can still use you. God can take your mistakes. God can take my mistakes. And God can make something good out of that which has been damaged. Maybe you're listening tonight and you say, Pastor, that's me. My life has been wrecked and my life has been damaged by sin and I've got regrets and I've got things that I haven't done right in my life. Well, first of all, I'll say join the crowd. But secondly, I'll say this, God can still use you and God still used his people. Now they went into Babylonian captivity and they did suffer some consequences, but can I tell you, they came out again and God restored and God blessed and God used them and God can use you. Say, Pastor, I'm listening and I, I, I have not uh, been damaged uh, greatly by sin and I have not uh, wrecked my life and I have not ruined my life. Can I say to you, hallelujah, it's only by the grace of God that you haven't, but would you learn from the example of Jeremiah and his message about the linen girdle? Would you make the decision tonight to say, I'm going to stay close to God. I'm going to stay attached to him. I'm going to stay holy. I'm going to stay set apart. I'm going to live my life to bring honor and glory to God, and I'm not getting away from him. That'd be a great decision to make tonight. Let's pray. Our Father, I thank you for the good news. I thank you that the story does not end without hope, but I thank you that whenever you are involved, Whenever God is in the equation, I'm so thankful that there is always hope. And God, I pray that you'd help us to take that good news. May we realize that you can take our mistakes and you can take our failures and you can take the things in our lives that seem like they're a mess. And Lord, you can work a miracle. And I thank you, Lord, for that good news. Help us not to bring grief to your heart. Help us not to break your heart. But Lord, may we bring honor and glory to you. And may we be a garment that you can use. A garment that would be used for your purpose, for your honor, and for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, I'd like to ask Miss Lydia to play a hymn of invitation. And right there where you're at, maybe you want to pray with somebody sitting in the living room with you or at the kitchen table. Maybe you just want to pray together and say, God, would you help us? And we would bring glory to you. You know, during times like these, people are watching. Boy, it is so easy to shout the victory when everything's going good. But can I tell you, God's still in control in the hard times. And would you trust him? Would you lean on him? And would you draw close to him during this time? And let your life bring glory and honor to God. Maybe your life has been marred, it's been damaged, it's been destroyed. I'm thankful that you and I can go to God and say, God, would you forgive me? Would you cleanse me? And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the time we've been together this evening. I pray that you bless our folks. I pray that you'd watch over them. I pray you'd protect them. Lord, I pray that you would use the live streaming and use our radio ministry. I pray that you would use the uh, different avenues and different tools we have that we might proclaim the gospel. Lord, through this, I pray that uh, the focus would not be on us, but I pray the focus would be upon you. May souls be saved and lives be changed and families be strengthened through all of this. Lord, I pray that you'd bless us. I pray that you'd give us a good day on Sunday. I pray that you'd bring us back by way of live stream and radio and bless the drive-in service Sunday morning. May that uh, be used to encourage our people and to bring honor and glory to you. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. I pray you'd watch over our members, supply their needs, give them strength and use them in a mighty way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you folks, and I appreciate you tuning in and watching. If I can do anything for you, I hope you'll let me know. I love you. God bless you. Have a good night. We'll uh, tune out at this time, and we'll look forward to seeing you Sunday.
Yeah.